Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you tonight. Indeed, we ask you, let thy kingdom come and let thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Father, prepare, prepare us and give us that peace that is in heaven. Let us experience it on earth. Father, we pray in Jesus' name. Thanking you tonight for bringing us together once again. We are here tonight because we are eager to know thy ways and to follow thy ways. Father, we are hungry for more of you. And we pray tonight that you will teach us and you will reveal yourself to us through your word. And you will encourage us tonight. And by the time we leave here, we will have your peace. That peace that surpasses all understanding. That's what we need. Prince of Peace, give us your peace. I pray, Father, for everyone that is on this broadcast. I pray that, Lord, you will bring us to a place of peace as we listen to your word. May every heart that is worried receive your touch. May everyone that is anxious receive your blessing and your peace. And may all of us, by the end of this broadcast, be strengthened to be able to walk faithfully before you without any worries. Help us to trust in you. Help us to have that confidence in you that you are able. Help us to come to that realization that every word that you have spoken, you are able to bring it to pass. Spirit of God, tonight let your will be done. Speak through me and prepare the hearts of your people to receive your word. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. Um, tonight is a house of peace, basically, which is uh, our cell meetings. And um, as you know, uh, because of we are not fully uh, back into meeting face to face, so we still will continue with online broadcast, um, even because it's done in people's houses and all that. You're not really willing to really send a lot of people and uh, I mean like definitely we will have problems with uh, social distancing because if the place is small and you put in and that's exactly what we face I mean we sit very close to one another when we go to houses of peace so it is not wise and it is not advisable that in this kind of atmosphere we will still send people into people's houses to really be that close to one another and that is why we have decided that not only would we do the church services online but we will also continue to do the houses of peace which is basically the cell meetings online amen so i just want you to really understand that keep praying keep trusting that god will uh let authorities and uh, i mean today it's um yeah today it's quite interesting that new zealand has uh, declared uh the country uh covid-19 free so they are saying that there's no covid-19 in the country any longer so uh life has returned to normal if one country can do that i believe that all countries will do that very soon God is still in control, 
and I believe that uh, this thing will go away and life will get back to normal again. Amen. All right. So tonight, um, we're going to really treat a topic, uh, one of the lessons that uh, we have in our House of Peace books. And uh, tonight, the lesson is, uh, the theme is uh, when anxiety knocks on your door. When anxiety knocks on your door, what do you do? <laughs> Hallelujah. Uh, we will try and uh, learn to let go of our burdens and surrender them to God so that we don't really become too anxious and allow anxiety, worry, and fear to suppress us and to really steal our joy and the peace that God really gives to us. Amen. Our key scripture for tonight is um, 1 Peter chapter 5, verses 6 and 7. 1 Peter chapter 5, verses 6 and 7. All right. Okay. Humble yourselves, therefore, and I'm reading from the New International Version. Humble yourselves, therefore, under God's mighty hand, that he may lift you up in due time. Cast all your anxiety on him because he cares for you. Hallelujah. Cast all your anxiety on him because he cares for you. Hallelujah. We are living in a world <coughs> where <laughs> many of us are very anxious. And especially with uh, what uh, COVID-19 brought in its wake, man is so much worried, afraid, and anxious about everything. Hallelujah. And um, we see in the Bible many times that any time these things are being spoken of, uh, like anxiety is really care, uh, taking your cares back to God, really overcoming the devil. It, it's, it's kind of interesting that you see the word humility as well. You know, when, when it, it is difficult for man to be calm. I, I don't know why, but man, I, I, the, probably there is something in man that makes man not uh, able to really calm himself down. So the slightest thing, man begins to really uh, react to whatever is around him. And sometimes the reaction uh, is, all, uh, is not good. But it leads into many things. It leads to into many, many things. This scripture begins by saying that, Therefore, or it says, humble yourselves, therefore. Humble yourselves, humble yourselves, therefore, under God's mighty hand, that he may lift you up in due time. You see, there are some key words here. Humble yourselves, under God's mighty hand, that he may lift you up. In due time. You see, the moment you see in due time, it means that you, it's not your time, but it's God's time. Unfortunately, what is happening to us is that we don't really want God's time. Or we want God's time, but we can't wait for God's time. You know, if we learn to wait we will not be as anxious as we are most of the time. If we learn to wait, if we learn to wait before the Lord, if we learn to wait on God, if we learn to really <clears throat> uh, avail ourselves to God, humble ourselves in, 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 uh, to God and just tell him that whatever you do is right, so I'm going to wait for you. Hallelujah. Unfortunately, it is very difficult for us to do that. If you look at, 
It, for example, if you look at James chapter 4, verse 7. It says, submit yourselves, therefore. Submit yourselves then to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Humble yourselves. Submit yourselves to God. Humble yourselves to God. That's what Peter is saying. James is saying, submit yourself, therefore, to God. What is really happening is that we are supposed to learn to humble ourselves. Hallelujah. In, in order to really be able to overcome situations, troubles, difficult conditions, and solve problems in our time, there's something we need to learn to do. And that is to really learn to humble ourselves to God. Don't really fight him. Don't really try to disobey him. Submit, humble yourselves to God. Hallelujah. Because any time we try to solve problems from our own strength or with our own strength, we tend to fail. Hallelujah. And uh, in its wake, it brings all kinds of anxiety, sicknesses, diseases, tiredness. We become so stressed that we are unable to really achieve anything. The interesting thing is that if, if you were not able to achieve anything but you are still really okay, that would have been okay. But the point is that when you are stressed out, number one, you are unable to achieve. Number two, you are also sick because it will bring you down and it will make you really frustrated and really wounded in your pride. Amen. So what does God want us to do? What God wants us to do is for us to learn to humble ourselves before him. To stop fighting our own battles. To stop doing things our own way. But to yield unto God. To yield unto God. And to really allow him to, hallelujah, to yield unto God and allow God to really rule in our lives. Amen. Okay, good. Um, I just want us to really come to that point where we know that Walking in anxiety, worries, or fears doesn't really help us to gain anything. But it really leads us into a place where we lose our faith. Hallelujah. <laughs> let, me, let me say it again. When we walk with anxiety, worries, and fears, it doesn't help us to really achieve anything, but rather it leads us to lose our faith. Hallelujah. So, we tend to really walk and try to do things and try to solve our own problems instead of depending on God. And the, the one thing that I have learned in my life is uh, any time I have tried to really solve problems my own way with my own strength without praying about it. I am not saying that you don't have a brain. I'm not saying that you don't have to think. I don't, I'm not saying that you don't have to try to really find solutions to problems. But what I'm saying is that even in seeking solutions to your problems, you need to seek the face of God. Hallelujah. And God will give you uh, a lot of uh, direction, wisdom, you know, wisdom comes from God. If we will all learn to do what Solomon did, I believe that we will work on this earth and be able to really resolve many issues that are really tough to really deal with. Because God will give us, when he asks for that understanding, that wisdom, when he asks for that grace, he was able to handle things the way God wanted to really handle them. Unfortunately, because we are not doing that, because we are not seeking God, because we are not leaving things for God to give us the wisdom to do things, what is happening is that when I have a problem with finance, 
the next thing you think about is to find a place to go and borrow. Hallelujah. When you have a situation where you are struggling with what? With your health, for example, you tend to run to doctors. Hallelujah. Are doctors bad? No. Hallelujah. But you don't even seek for God. Your first stop is to go to the doctor. Hallelujah. Beloved, some who will even decide to look for, I mean, seek for God. And this is, this is, the, this is a very difficult thing to say because many people probably might misunderstand what I'm going to say. But I'll say it anyway and explain it to you. I don't want you to misunderstand what I'm going to say. What happens is that some of us, when we are in that kind of place of sickness and diseases, we tend to run from one pastor to the other. Let me tell you something. The moment you begin to do that, you realize that it is not God you are seeking. Hallelujah. You are seeking from men. But Bible says that curse is the man who rests. Hallelujah. If we are not careful, what happens is that we, we really rest on the arm of man. We really uh, try to. So I go to Pastor A today. And then I feel Pastor A is not fast enough. And that's where the, the issue of waiting also comes into the picture. So then I run from Pastor A to Pastor B. And I go to Pastor B and Pastor B is also praying for me. Then I think Pastor B is taking too long. You see, so it is not God taking too long but Pastor B. So then I go to Pastor C. And then Pastor C is also taking too long. So who am I waiting for to heal me? God or the pastor? Hallelujah. And the question is that, have we ourselves even tried? Amen. Amen. <laughs> And this is all happening because of anxiety. We are so anxious. We are so anxious. So we don't even have the peace of God. We don't have the peace of God that really will calm us down and will help us to wait on God. Many of us, through anxiety, have lost faith. So we can't trust God to do it. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. And like I said, asking pastors for prayer to, for healing is not bad. It is not a sin. It is not wrong. But, the, I mean, having the confidence in a pastor rather than in God is where the problem is. And it is very difficult to really, uh, um, because the, the line is very thin. I mean, it, it's so difficult to really uh, uh, distinguish between, am I really uh, uh, resting on God or on man? It, it's so difficult. But I just want you to really understand that God will give you that peace. If faith rises in you, you know that God is going to do it. And you know that he is able to do it. Amen. Amen. Let's look at what faith does what faith does in, in such situations. Faith is something that every believer, faith in God, is something that every believer would have to have. Because faith will help you to yield control to God. Faith helps us to yield control to God. Amen. Why? 
Because faith will let you. Let's, let's go uh, to Hebrews. Let's read uh, the scripture and then uh, we will, uh, you will understand it better. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 6. And without faith, it is impossible to please God. Because anyone who comes to him must believe that he exists. Faith makes you believe that God exists. I said what? Faith makes you believe that God exists. And how can you play, please God when you, when you don't even know that he exists? Hallelujah. So, Bible is saying that, and without faith, it is impossible to please God. So, in order for you and for me to really stand on our faith and not be anxious and not be worried, we have to come to that point where we have faith enough to be able to believe that God exists. If God, if I know that God exists and I know who he is, I can trust him. Hallelujah. So without faith, it is impossible to please God because anyone who comes to him must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who earnestly seek him. Do earnestly seek him in prayer for healing, for finances, for business, for grace to really stand strong and serve him in every area of your life. Hallelujah. So we all need to really come to that kind of understanding. Unfortunately, we want to please God. But Bible is saying that it is impossible to please him without faith. It is simply impossible to please God without faith. Now, have you ever seen God before? No. But you believe that he exists. And it is faith that makes you believe that he exists. So all this scripture, all that this scripture is teaching us is that if you don't know that he exists, how can you please him? And if you really haven't seen him and you still want to believe that he exists and you want to please him, then you have to have faith. Because faith makes you know that he is there even though you don't see him. Hallelujah. Mm. I know this, this is, uh, the, the reason I'm going very slow and I'm taking my time is for us to really understand some basic, basic, basic things. Because if we really come to an understanding of these things, beloved, you may be going through some hard times, but you will be able to rest in God. And his peace will come to your heart. By the time you finish, I believe that you will realize that, that he, he is the one who gives us that peace. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Whatever is impossible for man, whatever is impossible for man, it is possible for God to do. Because, you see, man is looking at the natural, and the natural is limited. So, there are certain things that you will be limited to do. But the supernatural is really so powerful that you are able to go beyond, bypass the natural thinking. Bypass the, that's why many people, I mean, they come to God, but they are not able to really trust in him. Hallelujah. Why? Because they are so full of the flesh and so full of the natural uh, mindset that they, they, they look at certain things and they just can't really understand why it is so. But the natural or the carnal mind will look at things in that way. But the supernatural mind or the spiritual man will look at things in the supernatural realm and believe that God is able to do it. Because, and you know, your faith is built when you are even aware of what God's word says and what God has done before. Hallelujah. Faith cometh by what? And hearing what? So not hearing my words, but hearing the word of God. 
the word of God will encourage you, will strengthen you, and will build up your faith. And when your faith is built, you are able to really go beyond the natural. So everybody is saying something in one way, but you are believing God to go beyond that which man is thinking. Hallelujah. And, and I, I believe that you're watching me, but there have been instances in your life where you have, that's why doctors can say that this is uh, impossible. This is your diagnosis. And it means that this is what is going to happen to you. If you have faith, and I'm not saying that um, you will not die or you will not get sick. But what I'm saying is that you may be able to, I mean, you may go through certain things. Yes. Because we're walking around with all kinds of things around us. But if we have faith in God, even in Jesus' time, there were people who were blind, but their faith in God. How, just imagine this. Let, let's look at this. Let, let's look at this one. Just imagine this. You are blind. You can't see. Hallelujah. And you meet Jesus. And he mixes uh, uh, saliva, the morning one, which... Uh, <laughs> mad and put on your eyes. Remember, you can't see. You cannot see. And on top of your blind eyes, he puts mud in your eyes to make your situation worse. And then he tells you, go to the river and wash. Canal mind will say that this is foolishness. The truth is that I was born blind. How can I go? Where, how do I know where the river is? Even if I wasn't born blind, I have walked around blind for a long time. I have forgotten where the river is because how can I? What, what, the, what, what would a blind man go to the river to do? If he's not careful, he'll be swept away by the river. So blind men don't go to the riverside. Amen. So I'm blind. I can't see. You put mud in my eyes and you ask me to go to the river and wash. Now apply candle mind to this. It is only faith that will let you go. Hallelujah. You don't understand, but you believe it. So you walk there, and then your eyes are, op are opened. And now you are excited. Let me give you another scenario. Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. Amen. You know, I'm going to make it very simple for you because you'll understand what I'm going to say. We have a Veronica bucket here. What do we put in Veronica bucket? To do what? Okay. In Jesus' time, the barrels that were put in front of houses was to store water to wash their feet. So it's about the same thing. Okay. Now, if today, in fact... You know, you can have now, you can have a, a, a program with 100 people. True or false? Okay. So, we are back to uh, Jesus' days. But when you are going in, this time you don't wash your feet, but you wash your hands. Amen. So, we are back to Bible days. Now, you get to the door. You, you wear your three-piece suit and everything. You wash your hands and you go inside. But because it's a big program, we have 10 uh, Veronica buckets. Amen. And uh, because we have many doors, so every door has to have its own Veronica bucket. Now, the wine being served, that, you know, you can drink wine. It's not banned. That one, you can still, people still drink. Okay. So the wine at the function gets finished. And then they want wine. Then Jesus' mother tells the guys that, look, 
Whatever he tells you, the, the guys who are serving, whatever he tells you to do, do it. And then, so they are standing there. Jesus is not saying anything. And in their heads, say something. Then he says something. He says, go and fetch water and fill the Veronica buckets. Hallelujah. So they fill the Veronica buckets. And they know, because they filled it in the first place. So they know that the water that they put in the Veronica bucket is to wash hands. It's not for drinking. Amen. They fill the Veronica buckets, but it has nothing to do with wine. And then he said, fetch from this bucket and go and give it to the, uh, the MC or whatever of the program. Hallelujah. It's like we are in church and you say, uh, uh, Jesus tells you that, fetch it and come and give it to the pastor to give to the people. I mean, you say, no, the, we don't drink from this. We, we have proper water there. Go, there's ice chest there. There's water inside. Let's go and fetch that one. But the people didn't say that. By faith. Because they've been told that whatever he tells you to do. So he says, fetch it. Now they fetch it and they take it over there. Hallelujah. What is difficult for us today is we are wiser than God. So anything that Bible is saying, we are challenging it. But we say we are believers. But everything God is saying, we are challenging it. The reason we are anxious, we are worried, is that we are not really in tune with the word of God. We are not really submitting to the word of God. That is why we have all kinds of problems in the world today. Fetch the water and go and give to Whether it is water, you put it inside so you know it's water. But the king of kings... The one, and at that time, Jesus had not done any miracle. So for these guys to obey and do it, I tell you, the Holy Spirit was <laughs> gave them extra faith. So they fed it, and they went. And when the guy, the MC tasted it, it's wine. You can imagine what these young guys or these servants will do. I believe that they left their jobs that day and decided to follow Jesus. Because if it were me, I would follow him for the rest of my life. Because, look, nobody, he didn't pray. He didn't do anything. I was the one who fed the water. He didn't fetch the water. He doesn't even know where I fed the water from. And it is me who poured the water into that Veronica bucket. And it is me who fed the water. And on my way, he didn't even follow me. But by the time I moved from the Veronica bucket to the MC, whatever is in that cup has turned into wine. Hallelujah. This is where we ought to be. But this is where we cannot be. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You see, when, the, when the, 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 the wine got finished, everyone was worried. The, the one doing the program, I believe, was very anxious. Where am I going to get wine? Where am I going to get this? Where am I going to get... That, isn't that what we do all the, all the time? From morning to evening. How is it going to happen? How, is, how am I going to do this? How am I going to do that? How am I going to get married? How am I going to get a husband? How am I going to get a wife? How am I going to get healed? How am I going to get this? How am I going to get money? How am I going to get... How am I get we don't, so that brings anxiety and we are worried and we are trying everything that is possible, which is impossible. Hallelujah. We're trying everything, but it's not working. Hallelujah. Why? Because we are unable to build up our faith and faith can only be built by the word of God. Faith can by and hearing from your storybook. Hallelujah. If you can stop a little while for a small period of time, if you can stop watching the movies, and if you can stop really listening to whatever you are listening to that doesn't glorify God, and if you can for once know that I'm a believer 
And what can really build up my faith to really trust in God is the word of God and pay attention to the word of God and stop listening to all the news and all the things that you are listening to. Your faith will rise. You know, many people are asking, how can I build my faith? Go and read the word of God. Stop watching the things you are watching. Stop listening to the things you are listening to. Hallelujah. Many of us today, anyway, that's not what I'm doing tonight. Let me move to where, what I'm doing. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen, if you want to really build your, I mean, stop being anxious and stop being worried and, and uh, kick fear away out of your life, one thing you need to do is to begin to build up your faith. Hallelujah. And let me tell you the secret. If you begin to study the word of God and really put your heart into it and begin to practice what you read, hallelujah, what happens is that, you know faith without works is what? So when you read the word, faith is being built. But many of us, we are not seeing that faith in action. And we are reading. So many people are saying that we are reading the Bible, but still we, we are not. Our faith is so low. My brothers and sisters, everybody's faith is not high. Jesus said if you have a, as little as a mustard seed, we can move mountains. So, that it, so it means that we don't have, because I, I have never moved a mountain. Hallelujah. So my faith, and he's, he's not, listen, <clears throat> maybe he was speaking figuratively, but I, I want to look at it even literally, because he said, you can tell the mountain where to go, and it will go. Hallelujah. If he can open the, uh, the, the sea, hallelujah, and if he can calm the storm, he can as well tell the mountain to move, and the mountain will obey. And he says that if we have faith as little as a mustard seed, so it means that me and you, we don't have faith as little as a mustard seed. We have faith, but it's not as, I mean, it's very small, smaller than a mustard seed. Hallelujah. But if we will build up our faith, we will have to really turn back to the word of God. Please, for everything that you do in a day, spend some time in the word. Spent, I'm not talking about your two minutes devotion that you do. It is good that every day you read, you do your devotion, you read some few scriptures. Maybe uh, today was like about seven, uh, uh, probably 10 verses, 17 to 27, something like that. Yeah, so it was like 10 verses or probably 11 verses, however you want. I think it's 11, it's inclusive, so it's about 11 verses today. Amen. So it is good to read your 11 verses, but after that, if you, if you want to get really, really full, you need more. Hallelujah. If 10 verses, can, 11 verses can give you some amount of faith. Hallelujah. I want you to understand that. What about if I get 20 chapters? Or maybe 20 chapters, five chapters. If 10 verses or 11 verses can build my faith, then I will go for more so that I can even build it higher. Hallelujah. So I just want you to really understand that faith is going to help you to build up your, your system or yourself to such an extent that you will not be anxious and you will not worry too much. Amen. Amen. Why do we have to really build our faith so that anxiety does not overwhelm us? The reason is very simple. It is because... If you are anxious or if you are worried, it affects your relationship with God. It affects your worship. Hallelujah. Because many of us, I don't know about you, but as for me, if I get too worried, I can't pray. I can't read the Bible. Why? Because you can't even focus. You cannot even focus. You are reading verse 1 and you are thinking about the problem. So even though the, you are holding the Bible, but you are not seeing any words there. You can see and without faith, but it doesn't mean anything to you because your mind is not on what you are reading. Your mind is on the trouble. Hallelujah. 
So we need to really build up our faith in Christ so that we will not be too anxious, we will not be too worried, and it will really help us to uh, build our relationship stronger with God and we can worship him well. Hallelujah. All right, let's move on. Amen. Let's look at uh, Matthew chapter 6, verse 25. Therefore, I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or drink, or about your body, what you will wear. Is, it not, is not life more than food and the body more than clothes? 26, move on. Look at the birds of the air. They do not sow or reap or store away in barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much more valuable than they? Can any one of you by worrying add a single hour to your life? And why do you worry about clothes? See how the flowers of the field grow. They do not labor or spin. Yet I tell you that not even Solomon in all his splendor was dressed like one of these. If that is how God clothes the, uh, the grass of the field, which is here today and tomorrow it's thrown into the fire, will he not much more clothe you, you of little faith? Go back to 27. Okay. Can any one of you, by worrying, add a single hour to your life? What it simply means is that, can any one of us, by worrying, solve any problem? Amen? If you have an answer, you can type it. I mean, if you have a question, you can type it in there. I will definitely get it. Uh, and then uh, we can look at the questions. Hallelujah. Try and uh, set some, uh, I mean, if, if you have one, if you don't have one, don't worry. But if you have a question, something that really bothers you, please just send it and let's look at it. The point is that can any one of you, can any one of us, by worrying, add a single hour to our life? It's meaningless to worry. It's fruitless to worry. It's useless to worry. Hallelujah. We have worried and worried and worried and the problems are still there. When Bible is saying in 1 Peter 5, 7 that cast your care upon him for he cares for you. How do you carry? You see, it's like going into a trotter. You are going to uh, uh, Kumasi and you go to VIP. And the mate says that let me take your bag and put it under the um bus and you say no no I, I want to carry it and it's a suitcase and you go and sit in the bus and you are still carrying the load oh you see you are saying that, that that's crazy okay somebody says it's witchcraft but that's crazy i mean everybody will look at you and say there's something wrong with you you see the heavens are looking at us and he says there's something wrong with us hallelujah why because this exactly that's exactly what we are doing he says that if you come to me, if you I am VIP, if you come to me, your baggage is supposed to go under the bus. You don't have to carry it. Hallelujah. But then we say that, no, 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 Jesus, what are you talking about? I can carry my thing. So we just go into the bus and we still have it on our head. Hallelujah. Why is it so? What's happening to us? Give the problem to me. No, let me carry it. I love the problem. Don't worry about it. No. If I don't worry about it, what will I do? I want to worry. 
Hallelujah. So, let me tell you something. When you came to Jesus, he's consistently, every single day, Jesus is telling you, please, my son, my daughter, bring it to me, give it to me. What are you talking about? I like it, let me hold it. I like it, let me carry it. So, he said, cast all your anxiety on him. Cast all your burden on him. Cast all your worry on him. Cast all your fear on him. Because he cares for you. No way, Jesus. I like it. I want to carry it myself. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And you've still not been able to solve any problem. And you are still struggling. But you are still coming to church. I don't know what you want in church anyway. Hallelujah. In fact, let me... I, if, if, why, why, I, why do you come to church? Why do you come to church? Hallelujah. I'm telling you this evening, if you have any problem, take it to the Lord in prayer. Hallelujah. Okay. Uh, you don't have any yet? Okay. All right. So, we don't have any questions yet, but I have, I have a phone with me now. So, if you have a question, just type it. I can see it over here. Amen. All right. Now let's 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 uh, let's move on. We we will we'll finish very soon, and then uh, we can we can pray. We can pray. Look, I I'm going to challenge you today. I'm challenging you today. I don't care what pain you are going through, but I'm challenging you today. I don't care what kind of trouble you are going through, but I'm challenging you today. Hallelujah. You see, it's not like I, 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 don't, I, I don't love you or anything. If I say I don't care, it's not because I don't love you. But what I'm saying is that Jesus even cares for you better than I will ever care for you. And he's saying that, bring it to me. Bring it to me. Hallelujah. <laughs> Let's look at Philippians 4, 6, and 7. Philippians 4, 6, and 7. Do not be anxious about anything. Not some things. But what? Anything. Do not be anxious about anything. So if Bible is saying do not be anxious about anything, and we know that the Bible is the word of God, it means that God is saying that son, daughter, do not be anxious about anything, period. But does he leave it there? He goes on to say that, but in some situations that are so difficult that you can't handle. He doesn't say that. He says, but in every situation, by prayer, and petition with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And when you do that, he says that as you present your request to God, something will happen. He says, the peace of God. If you do that, he says, the peace of God, which transcends all understanding. Let me tell you something. The peace of God is beyond what you think or how you understand things. The reason you are still not really relying on God is you are trying to figure it out with your mind. But he says his peace transcends your understanding. So it doesn't matter how long you try to figure it out. It's not possible. That is why Jesus can just say, Peace, be still, 
and storms will come down. Hallelujah. He says, I leave you my peace, not as the world gives. The peace you know is different from the peace God gives. And he says that, he doesn't say the peace of men. He says that the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your heart. You need a watchman for your heart. And that watchman is called the peace of God. Hallelujah. And he says, will guard your heart and your mind in Christ Jesus. Hmm. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What does it mean? If you leave it with him in prayer, what happens is that he releases peace and you and me, we can now rest in God and leave it with him. Hallelujah. Because my heart will not be troubled and my mind will not move from East Legon to Kolebu. Hallelujah. It will be at peace. And Bible is saying that, he says that that peace will guard your mind. Now, you are getting all kinds of attack coming from all kinds of corners. Hallelujah. Let, let me, let's, let's read this scripture. It will bring you a lot of understanding. Let's go to 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 5. It says that we demolish arguments and every pretension that sets itself up against the knowledge of God. And we take captive every thought to make it obedient to Christ. Now, watch it. There's a battle ongoing on in your mind and in your heart. And that is what is bringing all kinds of arguments in your mind. Even when God is saying do something, he brings an, a counter-argument that says that, why do you want to do it like that? Don't you see that it will take too long? How many men have, have come into your life and you never get married? You see, this one, take it like that. Even though the word of God says that this man, this, uh, uh, man is somebody's husband, uh, so don't go close to it, then that thought comes and he says that, if God will give you your own, you would have had your own long ago. Hallelujah. And then he'll tell you, but look, didn't God bless Abraham? But Abraham slept with the uh, wife's uh, maid, and it, it was okay. Hallelujah. Don't you know? And these arguments are coming. Hallelujah. Don't you know that, you see, uh, he's not a Christian, but don't you believe that when you, you bring uh, him closer, you, you can take him to church and you can make him a Christian? Since you became a believer, have you changed one person? Hallelujah. Since you became a believer, have you been able to really win a soul for the Lord? Now you are going to win a soul. Because you want marriage. So you marry me, I will take you to church. Hallelujah. All kinds of things. And when God, you see, these arguments, they, they come in real time. It's like you, you, you have the issue and you try to find a solution and you try to get, you see, you go to your pastor, your pastor tells you one thing. The moment you go out of the door of the pastor's, and you, your issue is with, hey, mm -mm. <laughs> let, let, let me, it, it's, it's I'll, I'll, I'll say, it. Let, let me do this, let me do this. You went to your pastor, and you said, pastor, hmm, eh, and the pastor goes like, 
Oh, yeah. Uh, who is he? Then you mentioned the name. The pastor doesn't even know that guy. So who is he that he's asking? He's not asking for a name. He's asking for which kind of person. Hallelujah. Because if you mention the name, he may not even know the person. Okay. Oh, uh, Pastor. Uh, what is he going to know? Your friend is saying, Medina. Oh, okay, that's fine. And the pastor engages you in a conversation. And then every pastor will ask you, Oye Christ, you need. I'm sorry. The pastor is not asking you whether he goes to church. He says, Oye Christ, you need is different from Okwa, sorry. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Or your Christian, is he a Christian? He goes to church. What has going to church? <laughs> Hallelujah. I can tell you for a fact that there are people in church who are not Christians. Amen. So if you only say that he goes to church, then it means that you don't know the person well. Hallelujah. Then he goes on to ask one or two questions, and then you realize that there are question marks coming up. And then he tells you, uh, okay, Mate, what do you have to say? The moment he goes out, because the mind is not guarded by the peace of God, he goes out, immediately he goes out, then arguments come up. Do you think the pastor loves you? Or no coffee or any you? <laughs> Hallelujah. Oh, when you so oh when ma you you are getting old and look at what the pastor is saying. Make maybe the pastor's daughter even married recently, and you are older than the pastor's daughter. Would you say Hallelujah. Would you say Then you go like sure. Then it's not coming to explain or describe the uh, the pastor's uh, in law to you. Meanwhile, everything. Remember, the one telling you all that is a liar. Hallelujah. And the father of all. So, he is going to bombard you with lies. And unfortunately, your mind, your mind is opened up to all that. Because you've not, you are not guarding your mind. The peace of God is not guarding your mind. Listen, when the peace of God is guarding your mind, what happens is that you don't really worry too much. You can have faith in God and leave it with him. Hallelujah. You can really have that confidence to be able to trust that if it is of God, it's going to stand. Hallelujah. That is the kind of peace that was guarding the minds of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And they could say that it doesn't matter if we should go to this fire. Because we know that God is able. But even if God doesn't save us, it is still enough for us to obey his word. It is, listen to me carefully tonight. It is better, listen to me carefully tonight. It is better for you to die unmarried. And go to heaven than to die married and go to hell. These guys were saying that it is better for us to obey the word of God and die and go to God. Than to disobey the word of God and live and go to hell. That's what Shadrach and Meshach and Abednego were saying. And interestingly... If you really follow that story very, very well, and I'm trying to tell you and help you to understand that there is fire that has been heated seven times, worse than any kind of situation or worry or problem that you are going through. 
Yet these guys, and these guys don't have a good experience. They have some, ex- I mean, they have, let, let me not say it like, let me say that they have a mixed experience with God. Why am I saying that? Listen, I believe, I believe it strongly. It's not written in the Bible, but I believe it strongly that one of the challenges that the Nebuchadnezzar challenged these guys with was that, what God are you talking about? If he's that powerful, why did he allow me, a hidden man or a hidden king, to take you captive? If he couldn't protect you and you have become captives in my land, who makes you think that he can save you from this fire? That is, the, that is the kind of situation these young guys found themselves in. I am saying that they had a mixed experience of God because even when they came into captivity, God has proven to them that I am still in control. Because when they decided that we won't eat the food of the king, they still look better than those who ate the food. You understand? So in your life, you may have challenges that sometimes you feel that God has abandoned me here. But then you, have to, you don't have to look at one instance or one situation. Many of us, God heals us and tomorrow something comes and we say that hey, God didn't do it. But you have forgotten that God has healed you of something. Listen to me carefully. You are looking for two things. You are looking for a job. And you are looking for a husband. Hallelujah. God has given you a job. And God is lifting you up in the job. And God knows that at the level that you are, if he gives you, if, 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 if you yourself, you belittle yourself, so you're going to marry, he wants to lift you up. So you're going to marry a man, I'm not saying he's poor, but where God wants to take your life, that man cannot take you. And where you are, the man that can take you is also probably not willing to come that. So God wants to lift you up, improve your CV. Hallelujah. So that, because listen to me carefully. If you are looking even for a job, your CV determines what job you get. Hallelujah. If you have JHS, you cannot be a managing director. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you have a job and you are interviewing people for, and then you put the, uh, 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 the, the advert there, are you going to really, and somebody brings uh, a PhD and somebody brings uh, um, um, uh, JHS, which one are you going to take? Wh- which one are you going to take? Hallelujah. So, God is really building you up in that place and lead you to a certain level. But you are really running ahead of God. You have forgotten that God has given you a job. But because marriage has not come, you are blaming God still. These guys didn't do that. They have been taken captive. But they have also seen that God has made them nicer than people who had better food. Hallelujah. So it means that God is in control. And what we, what, listen, Bible says, watch it carefully. Go back to 1 Peter 5. Go back to 1 Peter 5, verse, yes, verse 6. He says that, humble yourself therefore under God's mighty hand, that he may lift you up in, I said in, in, what is due time to you? You are going ahead of God. But God is saying that in this time, you have to go into captivity. But in this time, I'm going to make you nice. And in this other time, I'm going to save you from the fire. It is he. It is his due time. In his season, he makes all things. Hallelujah. It is up to us. I said anxiety is knocking at your door. How do you respond? Hallelujah. The devil is knocking at your door with all kinds of ideas. Beloved in the Lord, won't catch it. You are not in competition with anyone. I said you are not in competition with anyone. There are some life stories I can share with you, but I don't have time. There are life stories that I can share with you, but you, I mean, I I, I don't have the time. And some people may even misunderstand me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because you see, 
There are times in your life you are going ahead of God. Let me tell you something. I will share something, not, not me, but I will share something with a cousin of my wife. Hallelujah. And I'm not saying that it's a bad, bad thing. But I just want you to really understand some things. Someone is looking for a land to buy. And he has money, enough money to buy land in a good place. But it says it's expensive. Amen. And he goes to buy land in another place, which is much cheaper. Hallelujah. And he builds. No electricity, no water. Amen. He didn't even listen to God. He was looking at the costs. But you see, listen to me carefully. Maybe God gave you the money so he can place you somewhere else. Amen? But you didn't listen. And then you build it. Now you can't even live there. And now you're blaming God. God, I can't even go there. God, I can't even. When you were going, did you ask me? Do you know why I gave you enough money? Because I know that if you build there, and your need is to really have your own house at this time, this is my time, but you didn't listen to me. Hallelujah. There are times in your life, you are going through a certain thing. And because of anxiety, you are rushing to make a decision instead of waiting to hear from God. Many of us are in some kind of competition with others. And unfortunately, we are unable to wait for God to give us solutions to our issues. We are unable to wait. This person put up a house and couldn't even go there. And you will then turn around and continue to complain. You saved the money. Yes, that's true. But you're still struggling and you are now looking for another one or another place. Hallelujah. Why? Because you were too anxious to, to have that kind of money in your pocket. Instead of just coming to him and asking him what to do. Lord, I thank you that you've blessed me with all this money. And Lord, I want to build a house. Give me an idea. I'm telling you, God is speaking to us on a daily basis, but we are not listening. And some of us, we are in a hurry so we can hear from God. Even when God is speaking to us, we are really putting it on, on the side and we're trying to live our lives our own way. Hallelujah. The only way, and I mean the only way that our hearts will be guarded is when we allow the peace of God to really come in. And when the peace of God comes, he will guard our hearts. Hallelujah. And when we, our hearts are, are being guarded by the peace of God, what happens is that worry is not an issue because I'm at peace with God and I can wait for him. When I'm praying and it's not being answered, I am still praying. And I think it's not being answered. But maybe God is doing something else. And I'm listening to him to really get an idea of what he's saying. Yesterday I was preaching and I was saying that. Many of us talk about waiting before the Lord. But we're still talking. And we're still not hearing. 
and we, we can go on waiting for one week and we, don't, we come back not hearing anything because we never spent time to listen to what God is saying. Some people can go on waiting and will pray for the seven days that they went. They will pray throughout and not read one chapter of the Bible. And so they are unable to hear from God what God is telling them. Hallelujah. Who knows that God will, will speak to you from only one verse of the Bible. Only one verse, and it will change your destiny forever. Only one verse, and it will change your life forever. Only one verse. God will, you go before the Lord, and as you are waiting, just to hear from him. You have prayed for 10 hours, but you are waiting to hear from him, let's say even one hour or two hours. You're just lying down. You're just being in his presence because you are in waiting, so you have all the time, 24-7, because you're not going anywhere, and you are waiting before the Lord. And God can, in uh, the, all the seven days that you spend wherever you went, it could be the last day that God will say something to you. But because you never had time to wait, you were in a rush. So you go with every kind of problem that you know before the Lord, which is good because cast your burdens onto him. But please have time to hear him, what he's saying. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. So let the peace of God guard your mind. Let the peace of God guard your mind and your heart. Amen. And that peace, because it surpasses all understanding or it goes beyond, or it transcends all understanding, sometimes it's very difficult for us to really uh, 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 understand it. And uh, because it it's goes beyond your understanding. You're trying to figure it out, but it's not possible. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. So, I want you to tonight, if you can really yield to him and cast that burden to him, you will be able to lock that door. And that, that worry, that anxiety that is knocking will never be able to enter. Hallelujah. Because he's knocking on the door. He's knocking. And you know the security there? Who is the security? Peace. Because he's guarding. So anxiety is knocking at the door of your mind and your heart. And Mr. Peace is there. And he comes out. He's a giant. Because he beats on all understanding. He transcends all understanding. So you can understand him. Sometimes you think that he's like this, but he's not like that. You think like he's that, he's not like that. Because he's peace. And he transcends all understanding. So he comes in, and he comes in, and then he goes like, Hey, Mr. Anxiety, what do you want here? I am the one guarding this place. Go away. And anxiety has no trouble going away. Why? Because the peace that he sees, hallelujah, is from God. And he is the Prince of Peace. Hallelujah. And he is strong. And in fact, the truth is that anxiety doesn't understand him. Worry doesn't understand him. So Jesus says that, you know what? You, what we read from Matthew, he says, look, the bed of the air, he doesn't have a kitchen. He doesn't take a salary. But he eats every day. Every day. When was the last time you heard that Mr. Bed was on, uh, uh, didn't have anything to eat before he went to bed? Hallelujah. You know what happens? There are certain beds in seasons where they are, they cannot get food. God directs them to another place. And the question you ask is that, how did they know that there's food in that place? They were born and bred in one area. They have nothing to do with Ghana. They probably, those who go to the Ramsar site, I mean, birds come from various places all over the world at certain times of the year to perch there because 
in their place, maybe it's too cold. And who told them that Ghana is warm? And who told them that it's in Sakumono that they should come? You see, the things that we need to think about, we don't think about. And if God can give a GPS to a bed to travel all the way from a cold country to a warmer place and give him the GPS to go back to his destination when the weather changes. Fear God. You see, I am trying to really get you to understand what God can do for you so that you will stop worrying. If, and this bed was never created in the image of God. But you are. You are fearfully and wonderfully made. You were created in the image and likeness of God. And if God Listen to me carefully. And God told Adam and Eve, be fruitful and multiply. And do what? Subdue everything, including that bed. And if the bed that you are subduing, in fact, the truth of the matter is that you name the bed. And if God will take care of that bed, how much more you? How much more you watching me tonight that God himself created you in his own likeness and loves you to the extent that he gave you dominion over all things. Beloved, I don't think we know our identity. The reason we are worried, the reason we are burdened, the reason we are anxious is because, number one, we don't know who we are. Number two, we don't understand the God we serve. Number three, we can't even trust him. We, we, we think God is a liar. And God is unable to keep his word. So what he said about me has taken too long. Hallelujah. Bible says that in the 430th year of the Israelites or the Jews being in slavery in Egypt on the 400 and in the 430th year God remembered them and took them out why because he said they would be there for 430 years if for 430 years he didn't forget his promise and he didn't forget. When he, they were suffering, you see, oh my God. When they were suffering, it looked like God was asleep. But they forgot that it's not God's season. God's season was 430 years. Do you know God's season for you? Do you know God's plan for you? Why do you worry? The people were being subdued, beaten. All kinds of things were happening to them. But an anxiety was consistently knocking at their door. Hallelujah. In, you see, and the way God plans it, hallelujah, he planned it in such a way that when every, every male boy child was being uh, killed, one woman got a new idea. And he said, this one won't die. Hallelujah. So he puts him in a basket. Lay, lay, uh, uh, leaves in the basket and put, her, uh, put him in the river. I don't know whether it's a high tide or low tide, but remember, God controls the tides. So when he was put there, he could have been washed away. And that small girl couldn't have done anything about it. Hallelujah. And that day, Pharaoh's daughter came earlier than usual. You see, if God is in charge and he's working it out, he will control everything 
and he will decide everything that happens. Hallelujah. So if you can wait on him, and if you can begin to allow his peace to flood your mind and guard your mind, you will not worry about anything. Hallelujah. When anxiety knocks on your door, what you, will you do? What will you do? Do you succumb to it? Do you submit to it? Or you apply the word of God? Or you apply faith? And says that, even though this is a tough situation, I trust that God is in control. Beloved in the Lord. I'm just coming to an end. I have gone through anxiety before. I, I have gone through worries before. And I'm not saying that anxiety will not knock on your door. I'm not saying that worry will not knock on your door. I'm not saying, yesterday I was telling someone and I said that, look, the person was telling me that, I, I was saying that, be consistent with God. And he says, yeah, I want to, but sometimes, you know, it's so tough. And it's so, I said, look for someone, a friend that you can pray with, that when it's tough, you can talk to. And talk to God. But sometimes, a, a, a prayer partner or a friend who is not the one going through that anxiety will stand in and will be able to pray with you. Hallelujah. Why? Because sometimes, and this is the reality of life, and this is the reality of believers as well, sometimes when the trouble is so hard and anxiety keeps knocking and will not relent, you know what happens? It's difficult for you to pray. And it's very difficult for you to reason correctly. But you need, if you have someone else to help you, you'll be able to stand. Because he will bring in some fresh oil, some fresh fire, some fresh fuel to really quicken you up and strengthen you. Anxiety, when he knocks on the door, he's eager to let you throw everything that you know about God away so you can really obey him. But what you ought to do is to allow the peace of God to guard your heart and your mind. Hallelujah. Tonight, you've been listening to me and you've been anxious about certain things. And as a Christian as you are, I have told you from the beginning that one of the things that is going to really help you to leave things for God is to learn to be humble. You need also to build up your faith. And you need to allow the peace of God to guard your mind and your heart. And if you allow these things to happen, what is going to happen is that even in times of crisis, even in times of difficulties, you will be able to say that I know that my God will show up. But even if, even if, even if he doesn't show up, I will still trust in him and I will never give up. If you have a question, I want you to bring it because we are ending now and uh, I just want you to really understand that 
God is right here with us. And what you are going through is not beyond him. What you are going through is not beyond God. I know anxiety, I know worry, and I know fear is knocking on your door. He's looking for an opportunity to enter to mess up your life. He's looking for an opportunity to enter to shake your faith. He's looking for an opportunity to enter to let you give up. But if only you allow the peace of God to guard your heart and your mind. Mr. Anxiety, Mr. Worry, and Mr. Fear will give up and will leave you alone. Many of us are afraid to go through tough times. But it's part of the journey. Some of the times the journey may be hard. But one thing you need to remember is he never gives up on us. One thing you need to remember is that he never said that we will not go through trouble. But he said, if you go through trouble, can you give me John 16, 33? If, you even, if even you go through that, you need to really have that confidence that he is there for you. He says that I've told you these things so that in me you may have peace. You may have what? Because that is the peace that is going to guard your mind and your heart. So he's foretold you. He's made us understand that there will be tough and difficult times. And he says that in this world you will have trouble. Please. Jesus himself says that in this world we will have trouble. I want you to really understand and I cannot talk about this without talking about Peter. When God, Jesus told him that the devil wants to sift you like wheat. You and your colleagues. But I've prayed for you so that your faith will not fail. God is not promising us trouble-free life. He's never said that. He says, even if you walk through the valley of the shadow of death... He says that when you walk, in Isaiah, he says that when you walk through the waters, they will not overwhelm you. When you walk through fire, they will not burn you. He didn't say that you may not walk through fire at all. Fire, when you walk through fire, you will be burned. But he says that when you walk through fire, it will not burn you. And he proved it. He proved it. In the case of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they went through fire. They were put in fire, which has been heated seven times more. And when they came out of the fire, God's promise came. Every promise that he has promised them concerning the fire came to pass. They came out of the fire without even the scent of fire or smoke on their bodies. And none, in fact, the, 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 the hair on their hands was intact. On their head was intact. In fact, their clothing were intact. But the people who threw them into the fire were burned. It tells you how God is able to take care of his own. I don't know what is troubling you. I don't know what has made you so anxious. I don't know what sickness, what disease. I don't know what financial situation you are going through that you are so worried. I don't know what emotional pain you are going through that makes you so worried. I don't know what the situation is. I don't know. But I know something. I know that God is able to take care of you. I know that if you really will submit to him in his due time, he will make all things beautiful. In, 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 in the time that he has really, really set up for you, he's going to make all things beautiful for you. Yes, weeping may endure or mourning may endure for a night, but there is a joy when. Let us learn to depend on God. When anxiety comes, 
Let us learn to trust God. Let us learn to hold on to the faith that we profess. And let us know that he will show up. I want to assure you tonight. There's too much going on around the world. There's too much re trouble really going on around us. But I just want to assure you that God is in charge. God is in charge. There is nothing too hard for the Lord. Do you think that God doesn't see? Do you think that God doesn't know what's going on? Hallelujah. And if he knows it, he knows that his child or his children are in that kind of situation. Hallelujah. He saw Job. He saw what he's going he was going through. He saw the Israelites in Egypt. And he saw the trouble they were going through. But it was not yet 430 years. Whatever you are going through, God will take you out of it. But it must happen in his season. It is his due time. So I want to assure you tonight, no matter what you are going through, God is in control. God is in control. Hasta Jesus is in control. He's in control all over the world. Master Jesus, he's in control. He's in control all over the world. I don't know what you are going through. But I want you to really be assured tonight. Yes. That you can still sleep in the midst of the storm. Yes. That you can still rest in the midst of the storm. Yes, Lord. If only you will realize that he is in control. Yes. He says that, but take heart. Mm. I have overcome the world. Mm. He has overcome the world. The Lord, the world has no control over you. Yes. The Lord has control over you. Come on. He has control over your life. Yes. And he has control over my life. Yes. Beloved, wherever you are, I want you to stand up on your feet. Whether you are in your bedroom, in your living room, if you are driving, then uh, I want you to pack and then pray this prayer. Jesus. <laughs> I want you to pray this prayer with me tonight. 
And as a sign of surrender, I want you to lift up your two hands. And say this after me. Heavenly Father. Heavenly Father. On this day. On this day. I humble myself before I your humble presence. Myself. Before your presence. Before your presence. I recognize. I recognize. That in my strength. That in my strength. I cannot solve the problems. I cannot solve the problems. I face in my life. I face, I face in my life. With faith, with faith, I cast upon you. I cast upon you all anxiety, all anxiety, worry, worry, and fear, and fear. I release, I release every burden, every burden, every yoke, every yoke that overwhelms me. That overwhelms me. I know, I know that the highest expression, that the highest expression. Of my faith, of my faith, is when I rest. It's when I rest in you, in you, Lord. Lord, I give you, I give you my anxieties, my anxieties and problems, and problems. Now, now, fill me, fill me with your peace, with your peace. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Now, every anxiety, every problem, every worry, every difficulty that you are going through, I want you to pour it before him right now. Leave it with him right now. Be specific and tell him exactly what it is. And tell him that I give it to you. You said that I should cast my burden on you. I cast it onto you tonight. Whatever it is, I give it to you tonight. I According to your word, I cast my burdens onto you. For you have promised me that you care for me. I give it over to you tonight. I release it to you tonight. I am not going to carry it again. I am not going to worry again. I leave it with you tonight. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Name of Jesus. Release it. Release it. Whatever it is, it could be your financial problem. It could be your rent. It could be your marriage issues, it could be your health issues, whatever it is, send it over to him. He says he cares for you. He says he's in control. Give it. Give it to him. He has already overcome the whole world. Give it to him. Release it tonight. Release it tonight. Don't take it back home. Don't take it to your, to your bedroom. Leave it now. Leave it on Jesus. Just give it over to him. Release it to him. Don't carry it again. Tell him that I release it to you. I give it to you. Take it tonight. Take my worry. Be specific. Whatever it is. If it is a health issue, tell him tonight. I leave it with you. If it is a financial issue, tell him tonight. I leave it with you. Whatever it is, give it to him. Give it to him tonight. In the name of Jesus. 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 He is right there. He is ready. I said he is ready. He is ready. He is ready to take it away. He is ready to take it away. His promises are here and amen. He has said it and he will do it. He said, cast it on to me. I care for you. Leave it with him tonight. Don't take it. Don't hold on to it. Leave it tonight. Leave it tonight. Leave it tonight. What am I swearing? What am I struggling with? Whatever you are going through, leave it with him tonight. Leave it with him tonight. He is there for you. He is ready to take it. He is ready to come in. He is ready to take it off your back. Leave it with him. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Release it now. In the name of Jesus. Jesus. I don't know what you are going through. But in this atmosphere, 
His presence is here. In your home. In your car. Wherever you are, in He's there with you. In the name of Jesus. Father, in the name of Jesus. I pray tonight for your children. In the name of Jesus. Who have come to an understanding tonight. That your words are true. And your promises are yea and amen. Whatever you have said you will do, you will do. Father, in the name of Jesus, I've given them your word. And they have believed in your word. And they have brought their anxieties. They have brought their burdens. They have brought their worries before you. They don't want to carry it again. And they leave it with you. By the power in the name of Jesus. I pray that you take it all Jesus. off their backs, Jesus. off their shoulders. Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Jesus. If they are sick, Jesus. as they leave it with you, Jesus. take their sickness Jesus. In, the Jesus. in the name of Jesus. Take it off their bodies right now. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Every sickness that has been released in the name of Jesus, take it away from their backs. Take it away from their bodies by the power in the name of Jesus. Anything that is worrying their, your children by the power in the name of Jesus and by the power in your word in the name of Jesus, take it away. Take it away. Take it away. Every financial issue in the name of Jesus. Father, I pray and we send it to you in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, every problem in marriages, by the power in the name of Jesus, Lord, I take it off your back and we cast it onto you. In the name of Jesus, take it tonight. 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 In the name of Jesus. Spirit of God, I stand in this place tonight. And I come against any spirit Jesus. that is suppressing and subduing your people. Oh Lord. Putting your children in all kinds of difficult situations by the power in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I rebuke that spirit of anxiety. Jesus. That spirit of worry. Jesus. That spirit of fear. Jesus. I rebuke you right now. Yes, Lord. In the name of Jesus. Jesus. And I command you. Lord, lose your hold. Jesus. Lose your hold. Jesus. Lose your hold. Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I set the children of God free from your bondage. In the name of Jesus. Every burden that you put on your necks. Every trouble that you put on your necks. Every worry that you put on them. Jesus. Every disease that you put on them Jesus. by the power in the name of Jesus yes, and by the power in the word of the living God, we cast it out now, now, now. in Jesus name. Jesus name. And I set everyone free oh, in the name of Jesus. Yes, Be freed in Jesus name. Jesus name. Be freed in Jesus name. Jesus name. That pain in your body is leaving you right now. Yes, that pain in your body is leaving you right now. Yes, Lord. I said that pain in your body is leaving you right now. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. That financial burden in the name of Jesus is leaving you. As the Lord is bringing you a breakthrough. In the mighty name of Jesus. Just take it and receive it now. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. That worry about I am growing old and when am I and when am I going to get my husband or my wife? In the name of Jesus, as you cast that worry unto Him, in the name of Jesus, He's bringing your godly partner. In the name of Jesus, I said He's bringing it in Jesus' name. Any worry that is in your marriage right now, by the power in the name of Jesus, by the power in the name of Jesus. We take away that worry in, in Jesus' name. Yes, and Father, I stand here tonight and I pray that let your peace guard the hearts and the minds of your children. Let them be filled with your peace. Let them be filled with your joy. 
Let faith rise up in them in the name of Jesus. And let everyone that is listening and watching tonight be filled with your peace. May they enter your rest in the name of Jesus. And may they be able, Father, to sleep even in the midst of the storm because they have confidence and trust and faith in you that you are in control and you will keep each and every one of us. Father, we thank you tonight. Lord, we bless you tonight for how far you brought us. We glorify you for what you have done. I thank you. I bless you. May your peace rest upon everyone. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Can we quick, quickly do the communion? We have an uncle that keeps I like that. Steadfast and sure while the heroes go fasting to the rock which, which cannot move and the ferment in the sea we are found and call we We have an anchor. We have an anchor that keeps the soul. If you can hold on to that anchor, fast and sure was the beauty. Fast is it, fast it to the rock. We have an anchor. We have an we anchor. We have an anchor. That keeps the soul. That keeps the soul. That fast and sure. As a healer's rule. Pass into the rock. Which cannot fall. We have an anchor. We have an anchor that keeps us true. Set fast and sure was the pillow's roll. Fast into the rock which cannot move. There is a rock that cannot be moved. There is a rock that is so strong, that is so powerful, that is so well grounded, firm and deep, it can never be moved. That rock is Jesus. He is Jesus, your Savior and my Savior. And I pray tonight, that your faith will be grounded strongly in Jesus. And he will sustain you. And he will keep you. And he will show you his mercy and his grace.
by what you see with your eyes that you will be grounded firmly in him in the name of Jesus I don't know but there is an anchor And we, as believers, have that anchor. Your faith is shaking. But tonight, the Lord is promising you that there is an anchor. There is an anchor. If you can trust him, 
if you can hold on to him. Because that uncle. I said that anchor will keep your soul. That anchor will keep you strong. You will not be shaken in the midst of trouble. You will not be shaken. Your faith will be strong in the midst of trials. In the midst of difficulties. The Lord is saying that tonight, wherever you are, it, distance is not an issue. The Holy Spirit is right there. He says, if you can only hold on to me, I will establish you. If you can only hold on to me, I will show up in due season. He says, my season, my time is not your time. If only you can begin from tonight to trust me, I will show up in due season. In due time, I will make myself known. And not only will I bless you, but I will redeem the time that what you have lost, I will redeem it. I will bring back to you that which the enemy stole. I will bring back to you that which the enemy stole from you. If only you can hold on. If only you can trust me. I will show up in due time. Father, we thank you. Father, we bless you. Grounded family in the Savior's love. Jesus, we know you love us. May that love overwhelm us. May we be kept strong. Jesus. May we stand firm. May we hold on to that anchor. That anchor that keeps us so. Father, we thank you tonight. We stretch forth our hands and we hold on to you. Jesus, you are the rock that cannot be shaken. And we hold on to you. We hold on to you tonight. And we say, Lord, according to your word in Psalm 55 verse 22, your word says, cast your cares on the Lord and he will sustain you. He will never let the righteous be shaken. Father, we thank you for your word. And we pray tonight. May the righteous hold on to that rock that cannot be shaken. So that we will not be shaken. May we stand firm. May we rest in you. And may you take us to where you have promised us. We bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. Wherever you are, 
I just want you to take your bread and take your juice, wine, water, biscuit, whatever you have, and let me pray over it. Father, in the name of Jesus, tonight I thank you for the bread and I thank you for the juice that your children are holding in their homes, in their cars, wherever they are. I pray in the name of Jesus that you will bless it and you would cause your spirit to breathe over the bread and give it life and make it the body of Christ and breathe in the name of Jesus over the juice, the water, the wine that we are holding and give it life to become the blood of Jesus. The Lord, in the name of Jesus, these will be a holy thing that as we eat and drink, we proclaim the death of Jesus Christ until he comes again. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you. As you taught us on the night that Jesus was betrayed, he took bread. And after he had broken it, He said, this is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way after supper, he took the cup saying, this cup is a new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup. You proclaim the Lord's death until he comes again. Father, tonight we hold the bread, which is the body of Christ, and the blood of Jesus Christ. And we proclaim tonight unto the forces of evil and darkness that Jesus died. And he overcame their power And he set us free. And he will come again and take us home. So they have no rights and they have no control over our lives. Because we are hidden with Christ in God. We thank you for such a beautiful opportunity. To stand in your presence and to dine with you. As we take this bread and eat, we eat this bread, which is the body of Christ, in remembrance of Jesus Christ. Eat it. Father, in the name of Jesus, as we drink from this cup, the blood of the covenant, we drink it in remembrance of Jesus Christ. Drink. <coughs> Father, in the name of Jesus, We thank you tonight. We honor you and we glorify you. We thank you for such a great opportunity to dine with you. And I pray, <coughs> I pray for every soul that has taken part in this meal with you. That your peace will rest upon all of us. That your grace will abound over us. 
that everyone who is sick shall be healed. And anyone that has been under the torment of the enemy is set free tonight because of the blood and the body of Jesus Christ. We thank you and we honor you. May our physical bodies be renewed. May our souls be renewed. And our faith be strengthened in you. Hold us and keep us and bless us all the days of our lives. We bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Wow. What an evening. Can I have my offering? It's time for Titan offering. If you are watching us from home and you want to really give your tithe, you can see it on the screen. We have the number, the Momo number that you have to really send your tithes and your offerings. Those of us uh, who are here, we're giving our offerings here and our tithes here. Let me pray over the offering. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for the tithes and the, for the offerings that we bring to you tonight. In Father, obedience to your word, we do this. And we pray in the name of Jesus that may you, Lord, give back unto us according to your word. For you have said that as we give unto you, we give back unto us good measure, pressed down, shaking together, and running over. It's your word. And we pray that may your word come to pass even as we give unto you tonight. In Jesus' name. Amen. pray and then we close. Um, I just want you to know that uh, tomorrow there's, uh, we don't have anything. So on Wednesday we have a prayer meeting and I just want to encourage you that come along. Let's pray together. Amen. Father, I thank you in the name of Jesus for all your children. I honor you, Father, for the time that we have shared with you. We bless you and glorify you in Jesus' name. I pray that, Lord, as we leave this place, may you go with us and may you keep us. May your blessing really rest upon us. May your peace that surpasses all understanding be upon each and every one. Lord, may your favor rest upon us and whosoever that we come in contact with, may we, Father, have favor. Bless us and keep us in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. We'll see you on Wednesday at 7 p.m.
We have an uncle that keeps the soul steadfast and sure. Was the below's flow fast into the rock, the rock which cannot swoop. Pressing on the upward way, new height I'm gaining in every day. Still praying on, I get over. Lord, plant my feet on high. Lift me up and make me stand by faith. 